Hey everyone. If you've been staying up to date on your public freakouts, you may be one of the over 10 million people to have seen this video of a woman in what appears to be an airport wine bar. She was, pretty memorably, saying lots of crazy shit, including, um, involving some poor random woman who will probably never try to help a stranger again, spitting in an officer's face, and of course, resisting arrest. On the bright side, these were probably the only people in history to have gotten their money's worth from an airport bar. There weren't really any news stories or follow-up videos written on this story that got in-depth with it, so I figured I'd dive down the rabbit hole a little bit and try to find out the whole story for you guys. To sort of set the stage here, this took place at John Wayne Airport in Orange County, California, at a wine bar chain that some of my fellow pre-flight drinkers will probably recognize called Vino Volo. The video is actually being recorded by a random airport patron, a man named Derek, who happens to run a successful niche magazine and YouTube channel about RC cars called Velocity RC or at VRC Mag here on YouTube, and he gave an update about this whole incident a few days after it went down. And here's his channel, by the way, I'll also leave a link down below. So he gave us this update video, right? But unfortunately, he didn't mute the audio of the video as he talked over it. To discuss what happened, why what happened, what led up to this craziness that we all watched at some point. And it made understanding him a struggle. But essentially, he tells us several pieces of the puzzle that give us a much fuller picture of what was going on here. First, we learned that Derek's initial contact with airport wine bar Karen was when she was seen walking down the terminal towards this side, so south, I guess, from where we're looking, screaming bloody murder. When she came barreling down this side of the terminal, and as she ran by Derek, she apparently threw glasses at he and his girlfriend. So, by the way, he did literally say glasses, so it's unclear whether he was referring to, like, a highball glass or, like, a pair of spectacles. I'm going to assume he meant, like, barware, just because that seems more likely in this scenario. Derek then says that a full 30 minutes passed before AWBK was seen again, and this is where the video picks up with her sprinting toward our main character like Get Out and then immediately taking a seat next to his girlfriend at Vino Volo. Now, typically when you see a lady in a flowy dress sprinting toward you barefoot in an airport, that's probably your cue to leave. But our main character decided instead to record the scene that unfolded before him. Well, to be fair, she actually apparently asked everyone to record, which makes this all even stranger. Let's take a look. Hi. Oh, yeah. yeah. Amalia Joy. Okay. Amalia Joy. Amalia. Amalia. A-M-A-L-I-A-J-O-Y. You can find me on a dot com, but I've been trying to switch to dot love. I'll talk right here in front of other people. Yeah. I'm not going to talk alone with you, though, man. You got too much heavy weights on, both of you. Yeah. No, don't come after me like that. Not with all your weaponry, man. Look at me. Yeah, no, I don't think you are, man, because I got just water in my hands, and I have nothing to talk about. I have nothing to say to you, Mr. Desmond. It's Wong. Yeah. No. No, man. I've already, I've, I found my voice. I'm all done. You're not going to cage me, man. Cages have been broken. I'll sing. We can talk. Is it? Is that your daughter's it is. Yes, these men are scaring me, and I had to run. So look, look him in the eye and tell him that they're not here to scare me. Look at him in the eye because I know that I'm okay. I'm good. I just. Well, you're. I got your daughter and husband. Thank you. Would you like to walk with me? Because I'm not willing to walk alone. Will you tell them I'm right here? Let them come to me. Well, waiting for the flight. Yeah. We can't leave us back, so can't... You hear the officer that she's talking to, or security guard there, uh, say that her husband and daughter are waiting for their flight and that he can't leave his bag to go over and check on her. This is important later. I'm right here. Let them come to me. We're waiting for the flight. Yeah. We can't leave his bag, so we can't leave. Oh. I can walk with you. Would that be okay? Yes. Thank you. 
How can you say no to her? Are you kidding me? Well, you're gonna say no to I'm not, her? I'm not your be best friend, but I'm here to help you, okay? Listen to the women say no. Oh, you were running up and down, kind of acting cray cray. Okay, man, how are you going? So, sometimes, let me see that. Let me see that. Okay. Okay. Uh, well, that's your hands back. Okay. Are you guys okay to see me arrested yeah. like this? Where are you right now, me? you're detained, so please place your hands behind your back. She's wrapping her arms around her to stop from being arrested, and that woman is regretting her decisions. Mr. Bacon okay. and Mr. Dimmitt. Please Dimmitt. place your hands behind your back. Sweetie, you gotta let go. I want everybody to know where they're taking me. Because this is the Hotel California, and they're never coming back. A surprisingly coherent reference, I thought. Did you stand up, now? If you, if you take me now, then I'm never coming back! <laughs> I'm never coming back. And everyone's just gonna stand there and watch. On, that is what happens. I'm not. I'm not. They said I'm mad. And my children, my children love me. They're gonna break my wedding ring, and I've never been married. I've never been married. And everyone's just gonna let this happen. This is exactly what has been happening. Obviously, the woman displaying this behavior seemed to have something abnormal going on outside of just a bad attitude. This wasn't, in fact, a Karen at all, really, in the sense of an entitled person mistreating other members of the public, uh, but a woman who seemed entirely out of touch with reality for much of this episode, like she was having a full-blown hallucination or just getting certain thoughts mixed up in her head. This seems like something that would happen because of a person's failure to treat their mental health issues or mixing the wrong medication with liquor without understanding the way these things interacted. And these two things, the inebriation theory and the mental health episode theory, were really the two dominant hypotheses in the initial comments from netizens on TikTok and our public freakout where this was posted. Some people did speculate that this was just a woman who had enjoyed herself a little too much before her flight, but frankly, this seems like more than that on its face. But who knows? I mean, shit, I know as well as anyone that some people are just super duper out there. Uh, there's millions of them. I deal with them all day. I mean, third party, I don't actually have to talk to them, but I watch them be crazy um, for a living, essentially. There's millions of them. They're all walking around among us, causing havoc, driving. So this part fascinated me, and I wanted to gain some more insight into the woman who finds herself at the center of this story. And several people noticed that she did us all the courtesy of identifying herself and even informing us that she has a website. You can find me on a dot .com, but I've been trying to switch to dot .love. Now, yeah, I realized that just because she said she had a website during this rant didn't mean that she really did, but lo and behold, I was actually kind of surprised. Uh, what do you know? She does! And the website is... well, it's a trip, to say the least. When I saw this landing page, I was expecting, I don't know, like an Etsy business where she does something with crystals, or like a motivational speaker consulting business or something. But what I found was actually a lot more bizarre. Amalia Joy is a musician and even has her own channel on YouTube where she posts all of her music. In her YouTube bio, we find another clue. It says she is a homeschooling mama of two, an herbalist, upcycled designer slash seamstress, fire dancer, living off grid, tucked away in an island jungle. And by island jungle, she more than likely means Hawaii because she uploaded another video of her in a recording studio called Kukuau, or sorry if I 
butchered that, uh, in Hilo, Hawaii, the big island. And I definitely am not the first person to figure this out, as I later found several comments referring to her music after noticing that her videos had way more views than you'd expect, and that the comments, of which there were once many, were turned off. Now, I am not in the business of being judgmental about people's music. Many of you know I like to make music myself. It's not like I'm super professional. I just think it's fun. Music is supposed to be about having fun and expressing yourself, even if it might be weird to other people or maybe not radio quality necessarily. But I do have to say that this music was pretty bizarre. Arrows, mortar, pastel, rose, petal, crest, seven rays, song, halo. But her music is just one peek into her soul that I got from this rabbit hole into her YouTube channel because I also found this, a video she posted from July 26th where she monologues at length before launching into her acoustic song. Uh, she seems to be referencing the events that had just taken place. You'll notice J July 26th is actually some three weeks after the video of her went viral. And here's the craziest part of this. Her monologue there in her video sounds pretty much exactly like the person we experienced at the airport. I have gone through something major. A sinkhole, a curse is put over me. Carl Jung has a term, some ambulistic, some kind of psychic phenomenon. In time, all will be revealed. So between all of these videos, the music, the family leaving her there, and the off-grid herbalist living on a jungle island thing, is she just like this? Like all the time? I was almost certain when I was starting down this rabbit hole of a journey that this was the work of some major breakdown or crazy cocktail of substances. So I really wasn't sure what to make of all this. Is this just how Amalia is? that I, I really don't think that we can rule out the possibility that this was just her having a little too much fun at the bar before her flight uh, and just can't handle her liquor. It could also be the case that she was struggling with some unknown mental health issues long term before this occurred, and her previous videos do seem to hint at some really bizarre and unorthodox speech and thought patterns, but even if that's the case, it's not an excuse to attack people to throw things at people, to spit on people, or to resist arrest. As a grown, responsible adult, it's your responsibility to manage these things before you hurt the people around you, right? Anyway, my main two theories here end up being that she is just A, a very odd, strange, um, different sort of person, hippie-esque, perhaps you'd say, uh, who maybe had a little too much to drink and isn't used to drinking, couldn't handle it, and we got this. Um, Though I, I, have to, I have to say that she doesn't appear to be slurring her words at any point. So that is a counter to that, uh, to that theory. The other is that this was a result of a long-term untreated mental health issue or set of issues. Okay, so back to our main character's perspective here. This woman comes sprinting up and sets up shop right next to Derek's girlfriend where she starts addressing a female officer off camera, and that's who she's addressing here. Something to note too, because I'm sure that like myself, you're still wondering why she was running. According to this netizen who commented on the original version on Reddit, and who claims to work at the John Wayne airport and did so when this happened, this woman had just assaulted two pilots at the airport McDonald's, apparently walking up and just yanking on their ties before making it over to Vino Volo. The comment goes on to say that she then picked up and started drinking a patron's drink at the bar that must have been the water she had in her hand, it looked like water, um, before officers showed up to get a handle on her. Apparently the male officer involved is a really good guy, and people all throughout the airport have been razzing him about the incident ever since, including the person who wrote this comment. And it's also important to note, this officer she was addressing initially that we can't see was the lead officer, and she was at the time trying to assess this woman's condition and calm her down in a reasonable manner while she figured out what was going on. 
Obviously, that didn't work. Crazier still, according to Derek, her husband and two children were seated just 100 feet away from her. You can hear them, uh, the officers who were talking to her, reference that uh, her husband and daughter are nearby. Uh, but they were, yeah, they were right down there, probably able to watch this all as it was going down. Derek also goes on to reveal that this woman, along with her husband and kids, were actually getting ready to board the same red-eye flight that Derek and his girlfriend were waiting for. So there was a possibility that all this craziness could have gone down mid-air. Okay, so she's talking to the officer. The officer's trying to calm her down. Her husband and kids are apparently opting to stay out of this. She's getting more and more out of control. And then after the calming down maneuver fails, we get the arrest. And another detail Derek mentions that gives us a hint at the mysterious relationship between the husband and children and Amalia herself, the husband and kids apparently went on to board the plane without her after her arrest, literally leaving her there while they boarded a red-eye flight. And after doing some digging, I discovered it was the Charlotte, North Carolina airport they were flying to. So that's basically cross-country. They were going to leave her on the other side of the country having a some kind of episode or meltdown thing. Recall, too, that the Reddit comment confirms this detail. Is it reasonable to wonder if this means the relationship between Amalia and her family was already highly tenuous, and that this situation had proven just another embarrassment and frustration for her family, one of many such cases, maybe? It kind of seems to suggest that they were over it, I dare say. Can't imagine this would be easy to deal with long term if she just refused to change or get better. What do you think? Am I reading into this too much, or was this kind of a middle finger from the husband? Maybe it was just an important flight that they couldn't miss for some reason? Family wedding, kids' sports tournament, maybe? I don't know. Okay, so I went about trying to find Amalia's um, charges, because she obviously broke several laws here. You can't uh, spit on officers, and undoubtedly there's some record of this arrest somewhere, right? But lo and behold, it turns out that Amalia Joy, probably because the officers realized this was not normal criminal behavior, was not charged with anything. But during my search, I managed to figure out something else. Amalia Joy isn't actually named Amalia Joy at all, but in fact is named Amalia Collins, and she's registered as the name on an LLC called The Herbal, or Herbal Parable, excuse me, in Pahoa, Hawaii, alongside a man named Kyle Rudolph, and not, by the way, the football player. More interestingly still, according to this Hawaii business page from a .gov Hawaii website, Amalia Collins' business has been delinquent on their annual filings for two years in a row. Uh Uh-oh. Anyway, this has all been very bizarre, and this rabbit hole was a weird one, but I hope you enjoyed learning the whole story here. I did a ton of research for this video, so I hope that you enjoyed it uh, well enough to leave me a like. Maybe even hit the subscribe button and turn those notification bells on. That would be crazy. All right, see you guys later. Deuces.